Um, hello? Hello? Okay. Hi, I'm Mark, and I'm going to be talking about our paper, Situation Recognition of Visual Semantic Role Labeling for Image Understanding. And the central question in this work is, how can we summarize what's happening in an image? And here we propose a particular method that includes an activity, for example, loading, relevant objects such as woman, horse, trailer, but crucially, um, roles which relate how these objects participate in an activity. For example, the horse is actually ending up inside of the trailer. And so to motivate a little bit more why this representation makes sense, I did a small Turk study. And so I showed Turkers two sets of images and I asked them, is the same thing happening in these images? And so I showed them these two images and unsurprisingly they said, no, the same thing is not happening. And I asked them why and they said, well, the activity is different. In one case, um, someone is sweeping, and in another case, someone is spooning something out of uh, some sort of dish. So then I took another set of images where the same activity was happening, and I asked Turkers, what do you think? Is the same thing happening? And they were somewhat more convinced, and they said, well, yes, the same thing's happening in the sense there's two images of throwing, but they said, well, it's not the same because in one case, a ball is a ball that's a, and I guess a baseball is being thrown, and in another case, a football is being thrown. And finally, I showed them a set of images where I said, okay, fine, activities are important, objects are important. I took two images where the activity was the same, it's a pouring activity, all the kind of main objects were the same, there's beer involved, there's a glass, there's people involved, and I asked, is the same thing happening? And they were even less convinced that the same thing was happening, and I asked them why, and they said, well, the difference is how the objects are participating in the activity. So in one case, the beer is coming from a tap and ending up in a glass, whereas in the other case, a beer is coming from a glass and ending up in a person's mouth. And so this is actually the crucial difference uh, in our proposal than any other proposal before. We're going to use roles to systematically model how objects participate in activities. And so the core contribution of this work is to formulate a problem called situation recognition. The setup is given an image, you're going to produce a structured summary of an activity. It's going to involve an activity represented by a verb, so in this case fixing a set of objects that are participating in the activity, for example the car, car tire, which is the thing being fixed, and also a classification of those objects into how they're participating within the activity. So the part that's being fixed of the car is the tire, the tool being used is the tire iron. And so if we could do this, we could start making exactly the types of distinctions that Turkers were making when we asked them. So we could say, oh, pouring is definitely happening in both cases, but it's different in some aspects of the activity. For example, the tap is where the beer is coming from versus the glass is where the beer is coming from in the other case. But one fundamental challenge is, where do these roles come from? So what is the space of possible situations? So for pouring, we needed seemingly verb-specific roles, and where did we actually get the entities that we're filling these roles with? And so now I'm going to talk about our data set in situ, which is a large-scale situation recognition data set that solves this central challenge. And so the basic idea is to go to natural language processing and, and uh, reuse resources surrounding a problem called semantic role labeling. The basic idea behind semantic role labeling is giving a, given a sentence, a boy is fixing a car tire with a tire iron outdoors, you first identify the verb, then you identify all arguments to the verb, so in this case the boy is an argument, car, car tire, tire iron, etc. And then for each argument you classify them into a set of verb specific roles. So in this case we know that the object of the fixing is car. If you had a different sentence, you'd have a different set of roles. So if you have a sentence, a jockey falling from a horse onto the ground at a racetrack, you'd have a role, for example, source, which would be where the jockey fell from. And so the basic idea is to use a semantic role labeling ontology to scaffold our large-scale data set. And so we start by using a particular ontology called FrameNet, which contains 8,000 verbs, and we filter it for visualness. So we have about a thousand visual verbs, and we also filter the roles in this ontology for visualness. 
Unlike semantic role labeling in sentences, we don't have words to fill the slots of uh, these particular roles. So instead, we draw from a noun ontology word net, which has 80,000 noun categories. And then to build up our image collection, we query uh, Google using uh, n-grams. Basically, we mine n-grams that contain verbs and query all of them, and then have Turkers select yes, no, is the image in the uh, corresponding to the particular activity. And finally, once we uh, have an image we know is, for example, fixing, we present Turkers with a structure which we derived from uh, FrameNet and have them fill categories from WordNet. And so we've collected uh, this data set last summer at AI2. It's a uh, large scale. It covers over 500 verbs, 125,000 images. Uh, its noun coverage is over 10,000 entities. And despite being able to annotate any of the 80,000 possible noun synsets in WordNet, Turkers agree, two out of three Turkers agreed over 75% of the time exactly on which noun they filled which role. Um, in general, not all verbs are equal. So here I'm showing a graph of verbs on, on the column and nouns kind of horizontally. So this is how many nouns participate in a particular verb. Some verbs are very, very tight. So flossing can only happen in a few kinds of configurations, only in the bathroom, only involving people. Whereas other verbs can be much, much more uh, fertile. They can uh, have many more noun categories. So for example, scooping can have a participant, which is like the thing being scooped as seeds or ice cream and has different types of tools or feeding. Lots of things can be fed. Dolphins can be fed piglets. They can all be fed all sorts of things. Similar story holds for nouns. Not all nouns are equal. So for example, people are highly fertile, highly productive in uh, this data set. Um, another example is cars. So for example, a car can be uh, uh, the vehicle of a driving, the agent of colliding, the place of a buckling, or the destination of a pumping. A similar argument holds for uh, elephants. And so now, now that we have this data set, basic question is, how do we actually predict these uh, structures? Um, and so that's what I'm going to talk about next. And I'm basically going to show the first models for situation recognition and show that structured prediction is an important factor and that you can actually use situation recognition to improve object and activity recognition. And so the basic idea behind our model is to combine deep neural networks, deep convolutional neural networks with structured prediction. So we're going to start by taking a uh, deep network, VGG, put an image through it, and use it to produce um, the potential values in a conditional random field. So in this case, uh, we're going to use a conditional random field that decomposes under verbs, roles, and nouns together. And once we have all the potentials from our neural network, we're going to backpropagate uh, CRF likelihood to the convolutional layers. Um, in general, this, this is a pretty effective method, despite uh, breaking down the situations in terms of these triplets that can predict entire structures correctly. So for example, the image, sorry, the image on the left, um, we can say that the person is falling from the horse onto the ground and ending up on the field, or that we can say a person is uh, spearing a fish in the ocean. As uh, the structures that we need to uh, produce, grow larger, more mistakes are made. So for example, in this shaving situation, we miss, we miss the substance. So for example, uh, we, say, we don't say that shaving cream is participating in the situation, but it is annotated. And for, uh, for situations that have kind of like larger spans of nouns, can cover more nouns, for example, giving, the model often uh, behaves poorly. Um, in order to qu quantitatively evaluate, we break down situations into pieces and, and evaluate each uh, smaller piece. So we evaluate by uh, activity, whether the verb is correct, whether the verb role noun combination is correct, and whether an entire structure is correct. And here I'm actually showing our CRF com compared to a uh, CNN classifier that predicts the 10 most frequent full situations that occurred with a verb. And our situation in CRF does much, much better because it can actually piece together situation, kind of uh, pieces from different parts of structures. To kind of see why this is necessary, I have an example. So here I'm highlighting the frequency with which substructures occurred in a training set. So this is feeding situations. And so uh, for uh, the example on the left, um, 
the milk and bottle occur 35, 35 times on our training set. Um, on the next image, the eater being the horse, the one consuming the food, occurs seven times. And the CRF is actually able to put these things together in kind of a novel way. So horses were never fed from milk bottles on our training set, but the CRF actually puts that together. So that's important for uh, situation kind of prediction. We also evaluated what, uh, the degree to which situations can provide context for object and activity recognition. The basic setup is uh, you're going to train a, a CNN classifier that just predicts the verb and compare how well it uh, works versus actually predicting an entire full situation. And uh, situations actually do a little bit better at predicting activities. The same holds for objects, uh, kind of reasoning and predicting the objects in context with the whole situation is better than independently predicting any of the objects. Um, the errors actually kind of, some of the errors that the network make or that the model makes um, actually point at that it's like doing very, very well at context. So for the, for example, uh, the spraying image, um, we predict, or the CRF predicts that uh, it's a pumping situation, but in fact it's a spraying situation, but this is a common view for pumping up a wheel. Um, and finally, just to close up, uh, all of our data, uh, some browsing tools, a demo, all of our code is available on our website, imsitu.org. Just to quickly summarize, uh, in this work we introduce situation recognition and it's a role-centric representation of what's happening. We introduce a large-scale data set with over 120,000 images, 500 verbs, and introduce models that um, show that uh, situations provide strong context for activity and object. And everything's available on institute.org.